Well, kia ora, uh, fellow classmates, back again for another episode of Where Are They Now? Episode number 19. Now, these videos have been um, exceptional, really, with catching up with all of you guys, and everyone's had a wonderful um, catch up and, and story um, to tell. Our next classmate is certainly no different. Now, um, I remember him fondly, a fantastic football player back at school uh, when he was playing um, football for the first 11 with, with some of the other guys. Now, he's got a hell of a story um, um, to tell, and, um, and, I'll, and I'll let him explain everything, but it's a wonderful uh, chance and opportunity to say g'day to Mike Byrne. G'day, Mike. How are you? How are you? How are you, mate? Yeah, good, good. Thanks, Mike. It's been many years since I've seen you. Look, it's just wonderful to see you. Thanks for um, agreeing to do this and to catch up. Look, before we start, I know you've had a real journey in uh, recent times. Look, I just wondered whether you could tell the boys sort of what's happened to you uh, fairly recently in, in your life. Okay, so yeah, a few years ago, when was it? Start of 2018, I was away on a camping trip up in the Bay of Plenty, and we were out trying to do a bit of bodyboarding with the kids, boogie boarding rather. And there was a decent sized set coming in and I kind of stayed out and I picked the wrong wave to get on. And I got it horribly wrong and had a big, big wipe out that resulted in some uh, medical complications. Well, well, Mike, well, you know, um, look, it, it's, it's obviously a pretty tough thing that you had to go through. And as you explained, you took on the wrong wave, but you know, is, is it a long road to recovery? I think you just mentioned to me earlier that you're measuring things um, by the quarter. Yeah, that's right, mate. It's a, I think it's like a lifetime of recovery. So what happened is I, I picked the wrong wave, I got dumped on my head, ended up with a face full of skin abrasions, and I thought I had whiplash, but it turned out what I'd done is I'd cracked the top of my spine and I dissected this artery through here. So there was no kind of like physical manifestation of that. So we jumped in the car and we headed off thinking we were going to Matter Matter. And about half an hour into the trip, I told Suze that I need, Suze, my wife that is, that I had to get out of the car, got out and I fell over. And it turned out like this artery had bled out onto the brain. So I had a stroke, only a minor stroke at that point, but rushed off to Rotorua Hospital where I spent a few days. And then I went up to Auckland because I just kept having strokes because I couldn't stem the blood flow. And it clotted on that brain there. So it's been wow. about a week in Auckland before they got me kind of into a stable condition. You know, I've come back to Wellington, spent six months in a rehab facility. And here we are about two and a half years later, still in kind of intensive rehab and slowly making progress and back on my feet, can kind of walk around a bit. And I've just started driving again. So finally kind of a, can make a contribution to family life again, which has been really good. Well, wow, Mike. I know everyone that is watching this right now just wants to say, um, look, kudos, congratulations to you, you know, um, you, you, and just thanks for being here and sharing your story. Um, you know, what you've been through, mate, is no mean feat. And look, we just want to say thanks and wish you all the best, um, you know, in, in the recovery. So good on you, Mike. Well done, pal. Yeah, well, I mean, I think, you know, you don't really have a choice. You've just got to get better, right? So you do your best. And as long as you continue making progress, then you for sure keep going. 100%. So stick, speaking of progress, let's get some questions to you and see how um, see how we go. Now, Mike, recap your years for us from what you can remember of Stream. So where did you come from and how many years did you stay at Stream? Well, I came through, I was at St. Joe's through primary and intermediate. So I came into Stream in 89 I did the five years through to 93 with um all those other St. Joe's boys that came through yeah good on you and look you you did really well at stream you were a definite all-rounder um tell the guys what, what did you get up to the uh, immediate year following seventh form at stream what what did you end up doing uh so yeah year out of school I had intended to go to Otago I had thoughts in my mind about becoming a physio and like given what I know now about physio I'm glad that I missed that um, but uh yeah so I enrolled I didn't get straight into physio and have good enough grades so they suggested I go into intermediate medicine for a couple of years to get the qualifications I needed to go and do um physio but lo and behold when I got down there didn't quite work out the uh, dean of science I think he looked at my 
you know, qualifications and said, mate, you are not doing intermediate med. So I think I was down there for about a month, spent all my money, managed to get through the O week. And then I was back up to Wellington and I was at Vic then uh, to do a BCom out of that CIT campus that they set up. Wow. Wow. Amazing. So um, the O week down at Otago, no, no doubt you had a good time, good time down there. Yeah, well, I think it's probably more like an O month for the month I was there. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, look, I guess we can talk. Look, what's been the main um, focus of your, your working career? Um, what, what have you been doing? Uh, so what I've been doing is I um, did a stint in the UK and I came back. And um, through the help of Jamie Williams, I blagged myself into a technology-based role at the BNZ. And that started in about 2004, and I never left. I'm still there today, in theory. Wow. So with your um, accident that occurred, um, have the bank been supportive, and are they allowing you to work from home? How, how's that all working out? Yeah, the bank's been really good. I mean, I'm still on um, long-term kind of you know, illness leave. So I've got ACC helping me out, and the bank's continued to pay me, which has been great. Good. Oh, it's wonderful to hear, Mike. Um, now, I remember your brother, uh, Tony, who, who who also went to Silver Stream. Um, how is he and um, what, what's he doing these days? Uh, he's good. He's actually, he's living in Silver Stream and he's got three kids. He's married to a French Canadian girl. He's got three kids, three chickens, two cats and a couple of shit dogs. <laughs> wow. Sounds like he's got quite the petting zoo there. A little bit, yeah, he inherited a couple of pug dogs, which he thought was ace, but then he found out you can't walk them. Ah, uh, right. Them. All right. Hey, look, tell us about your wife and children. Please introduce the, uh, them to us. Sure thing. So I'm married to uh, Susanna, and we've got three kids. Uh, Benny, who's 14, Georgia, who's 12, and James, the youngest, he's nine. Oh, fantastic, Mike. And where is home for you now? Where, where do you live? Where are you right now? I'm um, in Silver Stream. Awesome, awesome. Um, and, and have you lived anywhere else apart from Silver Stream? Well, I was, I was in town for a few years after um, when I was at university. And then, you know, I did that kind of, I did a four year stint in the UK and London. Yeah. I came back in 03 and we bought a house in Silver Stream and that's where we've been. Oh, awesome, Mike. Now, look, you were a really good footballer at school. Did you play any senior football or club football? Yeah, I think that first year out of school, I played for um, Upper Hutt. I was in the, um, what team was I in? Like the men's second team I was in. Yeah. I made it for about half a season, and I gave it away. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, here's a question for you. And I've been asking all the boys this, and I'm wondering whether you can um, think of anything in particular. But look, I... A, a, a significant memory or event of of when you were at stream whether it be um sporting uh whatever uh, a teacher is there anything that sticks in your mind that you still remember to this day is there anything that you can share with the rest of the guys that'll be watching this yeah absolutely i mean lots of memories um i think i heard hugo mention mckevity shield this morning and i was thinking about this the other night but yeah those mckevity shield days i remember those they were so good been to lots of sporting events and I'm not sure I've been to any of that crap the same kind of atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying. That they were something special when we all went on the buses and and everything into town and you know, and yeah, it was it was it was massive seeing all the, the amount of students there and all the different chants that everyone was trying to outdo each other. It was it was incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I mean sometimes it got pretty um intense didn't it, up on that stand. Yeah. Now Recap my memory. I'm pretty sure you were an athlete. You, you were a runner? Yeah, I was a runner, like middle distance, 800 and 1500. So normally I was in there doing a run to come third or fourth, you know, never winning. Yeah. But, they were good but you were out there doing it, right? Well, I was out there doing it for my event and then I was up in the stands as fast as I could be. <laughs> a good time. Right oh, good. Okay. Tell us, are you, do you keep in touch with um, anyone from school um, or, or during our years? And if so, who, who's that? Yeah, well, I think Jamie mentioned we do a golf trip every year with a bunch of us and all of those boys that kind of came through the St. Joe's kind of route, I see a lot of them. So Will, Marty Watson, Noel Mackey, Jamie, and then I guess up in town we got Jim Bell and John O'Connor, and I see those guys a bit as well, and Aidan Byron. 
awesome there's a really good bunch of guys that you just mentioned all right my friend well listen i know we're coming to the end of um our, our sort of catch up i wondered um if you had maybe a, a special message to all the guys that are going to be watching um your video some of them you haven't seen in a long time um in particular mike that you've experienced this we um bump in the road in relation to your health um you know anything you want to say to the rest of the guys uh, well, I think I'd say this is it's been great, huge, and I think we should commend you. Can't commend you high enough for starting this whole thing off. It's been an awesome week watching these videos and catching up with names that I'd almost forgotten about. You know, I mean, every now and again, I had a lot of time for reflection when I was in that rehab center, and I did think of a lot of old names, and I was wondering what have those people been up to. And here we go, you've kind of shone a lot on, shine a light on a lot of things with people. Yeah, it's been good. Well, thanks, but in mate. To my injury, mate. All I'd say is um. Don't take that mobility for granted because one day you might not have it. And then you'll look at all the hills you never walked up and you'll go, shit, I should have done that. Yeah, look, 100%. I mean, if that's not motivation um, enough, then, you know, what is? But look, Mike, I just want to say on behalf of all of us, thanks, pal. It's great to see you. We can't wait to catch up with you um, in, in the flesh. And I know when I say um, on behalf of all of us and the rest of the guys, um, Look, keep doing what you're doing, um, you know, and we really hope that you recover well and recover in your own time. It's, it's been bloody good talking to you, Mike. Yeah, man. I guess the other thing I'd say is I'd encourage everyone who can make it along to the uh, foundation dinner to get down and have a look because I think that'll be a really good night. It'd be great to catch up in person and have a chat and be here, right? Absolutely. And so just on that, um, are you hoping to attend as well? Yeah, I think I'll be attending. I mean, I'm in Silverstream, so I've got no real excuse to not be there, right? Awesome, mate. Can't wait. That'll be great to have you there. Well, there we go, fellow classmates. Um, just, just again, really special interview this one, and I want to commend um, Mike um, for giving us his time and and sending us this message. So, Mike, thank you, brother. Have a great afternoon, and once again, really appreciate it. No worries, huge. Great to chat, man. Cheers. Thanks, Mike.